Joseph's up. Emmy's already gone. I didn't even hear her leave. Good morning, buddy. Good morning. Good morning, Jeffy. Good morning. What's for breakfast, buddy? You guys with all the cameras out. Come on. Well, we're YouTubers, buddy. Good morning, dude. Later, Jeffy. Good day, brother. Have a good day, buddy. I will, buddy. <laughs> We are off to the shop because I'm meeting Emmy there this morning. She needs to do some body work on her van. I gotta pull out the big beast because I'm putting Emmy on this side of the shop. All right, guys, so we got Emmy in the shop today. She's all, look at her, she's got everything. She's like, she's got the mask, the glasses, the ear protection, she's actually wearing that so she doesn't have to hear me talk. She just nods exactly. her head and pretends. Just pretend. <laughs> what, what you said, Rob? Yeah, I got her set up here with um, a way to collect some dust. So when we did my van out in uh, a Tyro Coatings out there and we sanded, we had dust everywhere. So I'm trying because my shop kind of looks pretty. I need to maintain that prettiness for as long as I can. So today, um, even though it was a productive day for Emmy, it's an experiment day for me. So we have this attached to a rigid portable vacuum and inside of here I have a bag and HEPA filtration system. So having the HEPA one here is going to help collect some of the finer particles but keeping the bag in there is going to allow this thing to stay efficient for longer. See I was on YouTube and I did a little research. Besides that I'm a little bit worried about what the dust is going to be in the air. That's why I said this is an experiment with her here because once we get standing on the ambulance and if Mr. Marky Mark comes out, it's gonna be a super big mess. And I don't wanna have that same massive dusty situation when, you know, come on man, the whole time I've been in my shop, all I've done is try to make this place look pretty. <laughs> so anyway, there's a, uh, a little solution I found on YouTube and I've, I dove deep. I went down and I started taking a look at all the different ways these guys are building filtration systems. All they're doing is putting a box fan on the top, putting four filters all the way around and throwing that on the ground, turning the box fan on and it'll pull all the particles into there. And then when you need to exchange a project, you just replace the, place the filters. And then you've got guys like these ones here who are using more of an industrial fan, building a nice big thing. I'm not gonna go that far. <laughs> Seems like a lot more work. I'm just doing this as a bit of an experiment. And if it does work, maybe I'll go this route where I'll buy a better industrial fan and uh, just run more of them because that'll fit over in the corner of the shop somewhere. So simple. Cheaper than buying one of those great big systems that you mount in your, in your shop. So today should probably cost about a hundred bucks, I think. Have fun sanding. I'm out of here just because just cause you're working. I'm like, I gotta leave. See you later. We got the bike covered up here too. It's a lot quieter out here than I thought it was going to be. That's something I worried about, about having my shop here on somebody's private residence, was how much noise that is going to be out here and if it's going to bother um, the owners of the property because their house really isn't that far from the shop or bother the neighbors. She's sanding away in there. You can hear a little bit, but you can mostly just hear my diesel heater, which is over here. Like that's the majority of the outside noise. I'm actually excited about that. Because if I walk over towards their house. Oh yeah, dude, you, you don't hear anything. Right? Not bad. <laughs> Okay, that makes me super excited. Okay, we're heading off to Canadian Tire to see if we can build one of those air filtration systems. All right, got some filters. I can't even hear the... Oh, she's rocking out. Come on, it really can't be that easy. This thing is moving a ton. 
ton of air, like a crazy amount of air through here, just like it was if there was nothing here. But it's awesome because with all the air coming out of here, you know it's pulling in everything from the outside, hopefully filtering anything that's in the air that comes down, gets filtered through here and catches all the particles, keeping the air in the shop cleaner for everybody in here to breathe and also less dusty. Let's see if this works. It, it's a little loud in there. <laughs> when I was at Canadian Tire, I was like, do you guys have any box fans? He's like, ooh, I don't know. I'm like, how are you sold out of box fans? It's the winter. He said people are building filtration systems for their home for COVID and stuff like that by putting the same filters I have on this one, which is a 12, whatever it's called. They're supposed to filter out everything from smoke to allergens to viruses and stuff like that in the air. So I guess a whole bunch of people here uh, in the town where my shop's at has made home filtration systems using box fans. I'm excited about that. That whole system cost me a little over a hundred bucks. Emmy's over there working away in the dark and I forgot I installed this in the shop for this exact scenario. Hey, ta-da! Here I am making her work in the dark over there. <laughs> I'm such a mean guy. Look at, look at the difference. Oh yeah. These Ford vans, let me tell you, man, when they start to go, they, they just literally just start to go. And I had all this problem when I did mine too as well. And uh, let me show you, man, mine's still coming back after all that work we did. Even with this crazy hot polyurethane coating it's still coming back a lot of this is just staining if i took a cleaner to it i could probably get it off but that's still rusting from the inside look at it man these once your van starts to go it's gone so my big suggestion when it comes to rust on vans is buy a van without it otherwise you're going to be in our world fighting this stuff for the rest of your life. <laughs> Rust repair, man. It's what we're gonna do for the rest of our lives, Emmy. Forever. Emmy comes over here and I'm feeding her really good healthy food. Dad's oatmeal cookies. Emmy's got some holes down here and whatever's in here is super soft. It looks like insulation almost. Yeah, so I have a question for you. Yes. And this is me being at fault too. I have a question. Yeah. Sorry, I don't. Well, you poke it. Well, point it. You just want us a pointer, not the sharp end. Did you reach down into all those yes. things? I remember because you made a video about it. <laughs> Very so true. So, as Emmy just said, she watched my videos when I went through these problems. We found so many items in these bottom <laughs> sections. And right now, for her, something has fallen down there. And as soon as there's any material, any insulation, anything like that, because if you're, just so you have a piece of foam board up there and it happens to fall down in this cavity, now that foam board's gonna get wet and stay wet and rot the whole thing out. I learned the hard way, except for we found some weird things at the bottom of mine. We a massive like rolled up come along with the giant buckle on the bottom. <laughs> found a remote control with batteries in that far other corner and then when we were doing stuff just recently with Sander we found a one liter bottle of mineral spirits that we cut through what is that man? maybe something from whoever owned it was stuck down inside there because there, what there would be nothing else in there unless there's a jug of something in there That's a lot. Guys, look at my hand. You smell that? Water started pouring out here, at least I thought, and it smells like like uh, lacquer thinner or something. Like there's a jug of lacquer thinner wedged down in here. Okay. 
rotten. What is that? I don't even understand what that. Unless there's a jug, oh. unless there's a jug sitting right there, because that would be the bottom here. Yeah. There's a freaking jug right there. Did you see the netting you pulled out? Look at this. This is what they used. That's what they used to patch the hole. Yeah. Just the netting with some bondo. Yeah, to hold the bondo one. Unbelievable. Here, I'll grab the tin snips. Me, yeah. <laughs> Dude, you can't fake this stuff. What is it? Mineral spirits. <laughs> and look at this shit. What is this? Drywall. <laughs> Story of my life with this thing, man. Come on, it's unreal. I cut my finger. Did you cut your finger too? Really? <laughs> yeah, electrical tape, baby. Yeah, but that's a lady cut. This is this was a bleeder. You call me a this bled. So please, you guys, if you're gonna buy a van, <laughs> get in there. Find the person with the tiniest little hands and get in there. That and also run a magnet down there in the bottom to grab any loose screws. One screw can cause that world of problems down the line. Like I mentioned, that was a CS company, so it was full of like their bag with like you know like stuff to repair whatever like the yeah. washing machine. That was full. I was pulling stuff after stuff after stuff, so yeah. it could definitely have something. And that's a hard yeah. cap. That's a hard cavity to yeah. get into. Like yeah. they're they're because when you look down them, you can only see down so far, and then it actually gets narrow. Like sometimes like less than an inch narrow to get down around the corner. So you never know. Like I left. Oh, okay. I left. I'm along underneath there. Man, I felt like such an idiot. And then like that one bottle of min that bottle of mineral spirits that was pouring everywhere. I'm like, how the f did I miss this? Yeah.